Okay, we are almost done for today. Last, no, not last talk, the sponsor talks after this as well. Uh, let's welcome my former colleague, Mark Wong, <laughs> for uh, an interesting talk about benchmarks. I'm looking forward to it because it's kind of a guilty pleasure task for me at Ivan as well. So let's go. Right, thank you. So, hello, my name is Mark Wong. I contribute to various areas of the community. I work for EDB, and today I'll give this introduction to Fair Use TPC Benchmarking Kits. There once was a time where I got to work for a TPC member company and publish benchmark results. And shortly after that, I got to evaluate open source software under various TPC workloads. So I goal for this hour is to see if I can help folks understand, uh, um, uh, have a basic understanding of TPC benchmarks and how they were intended to be run because I think that helps figure out how to use these workloads to do performance testing. Uh, so I'll go over what a TPC benchmark looks like and lightly review just some of them, the C, E, H, and D, S, if you heard of them. And because the TPC specifications are copyrighted materials and uh, um, uh, the rights to publish your results are, um, uh, you need to pay for the rights to publish your results, it's important to talk a little bit about fair use. And the spoiler for that is that we're not going to be we're not going to be talking about um, using these for competitive marketing, uh, but instead for doing system characteriz characterization research. I'll give some examples of that a little later. Uh, the, the other thing I'll go over is because these, because the TPC releases these benchmark specifications or just the specifications, uh, they don't they don't provide for the most part, code that you can run these out of the box yourselves. It is expected that people put together their own implementations, but to, to get started, it would be, it would likely be easier to find one of these open source implementations out there. There are closed sourced ones too, and, and many projects have their own uh, specific to their project type of implementations. So while, while I'll, Use, I'll primarily, primarily use these ancient OSDL uh, test kits uh, that I got to participate in help developing. A lot of the concepts here aren't really specific to these uh, individual test kits. If, if folks are more comfortable or more familiar with using something like Benchbase or HammerDB or any other one, if someone wants to shout one out later, um, uh, I hope that all the things I go over here will, will still apply to everything else. So a brief note about the TPC, the, the Transaction Processing Performance Council, more commonly known as the TPC, was formed by a bunch of, of um, database system vendors, systems, manufacturers, storage, operating systems, database management systems. They got together to agree on what is a good benchmark and, and uh, to create an arena that they could fairly compete with each other in. I don't suppose there are any uh, TPC members in the audience today. All right, so no one to keep me honest? So uh, the, uh, just a couple of links and, and I'll, I'll be sure to get these slides up on the conference site as soon as I can. Uh, there are a fair number of members, so I'll, I just, I'm just gonna put up this link here if people wanna look at them later. But maybe a little more interesting is that the TPC website also provides the benchmark specifications, it makes them publicly available, as well as the, all the re results as the member companies are um, publishing so that they can be compared with each other. I'm gonna 
start by describing the TPC, what a benchmark result looks like a little bit before going over what, what each individual um, benchmark actually is or what they're actually representing. Uh, the, the results more or less apply to all the benchmarks or the, the way one would look over a result is, in my opinion, pretty similar. So the, these results that get published all have uh, what they will call a primary metric, a number. Uh, this number will mean something like the number of transactions per minute per second, depending on what the benchmark is, or the number of, of queries per hour. Uh, but a uh, um, minor note that I'll explain a little bit later is that, that these are actually not all the database transactions that are running on, on the system throughout the, the benchmark. The, the other thing that these results show is the price of the um, the price of the system that the price of the system under test, so that you can look at uh, the um, a little bit of the economics of the system, I suppose. And the the pricing is is not just the cost of, of the system itself, but um, but the hardware which must be available for purchase is going to come with at least three years of support, as well as all the software that's being used in the benchmark. Um, all the software must also come with uh, at least three years of commercial support for whatever it is, open source or not. And to give some, I think, to give a little more specific example to, that I think will help illustrate is if we pretend we're using the a, if, we're, if we pretend we're looking at a TPCC result, um, if you'll allow me to briefly say for the moment this is just an on, online transaction result, you want to see how many, how many uh, orders you can process in the system. So if we, we pull up a TPCC result and we see someone says, I got one million TPMC out of this benchmark, that TPMC, um, is shorthand for saying benchmark, this benchmark C has one million, or the system running benchmark C is producing one million new orders per minute, or one, one million transactions per minute, which are the uh, number, of, which is the number of new orders processed, which is also the name of the specific transaction that's being counted. So um, the, the number, I think it's important to realize that the number is just not the number of transactions the system is producing, but it also directly implies how large the database is that, that is being um, uh, tested. So for example, scale factor to produce a 1 million TPMC number, the, uh, the size of the, the, the terminology used to show the size of the database means that they're at least 77,000 warehouses being built, warehouses being the unit of measure for the size, which, which uh, actually means that there's at least seven terabytes of raw data that was generated before it was loaded into this database um, before indexes were created and whatnot. And in addition to this scale factor, this, this one million TPMC number is also supposed to tell you that uh, over 770,000 users were being emulated. You, uh, the, for this particular benchmark, that means that it's pretending that there are almost 800,000 people sitting there entering, or, or entering orders, um, looking up stuff in the database. Uh, someone made a joke recently saying that if you run a large enough TPC benchmark, you might be able to make a dent in the uh, um, unemployment numbers around the world. But uh, for, for the folks here, assuming that most of you are uh, database systems people. Uh, another way to look at this result, result that um, is to look at the total number of transactions. So knowing that, that you have one million TPMC, that does also mean that you're running over 2.2 million transactions per minute actually in the whole system. And uh, I feel like people like seconds better, so that comes out to if my math is right, over 130 million transactions per second to produce a result like this. 
Oh, did I do that backwards? Oh, terrible. Okay. All right. That's all right. You guys can help fix my math later, too. I have more math coming up. So, uh, yeah, so uh, um, who can help me do that in my head? It's not 2.2. All right, someone can help me figure that out later. So, the, so these results also have a cost associated with them. So let's say the system, this system that had comes with three years of support of all the hardware and software costs $8 million. So, so we can look at a, we, we can um, look at a price performance type of, of um, uh, the way we would look at the price performance for this 1 million TPMC result is people will say, Oh, it cost eight dollars for a TPMC, or, or in other words, that if you have a system that's able to process a million orders per minute, then it's costing you eight dollars to make a sale. For example, uh, other minor note is is that the the system cost also uh, means that that this this transaction rate that you're supporting here there is also enough storage to support that transaction rate for 60 days of growth before you have to start doing anything with the data or any maintenance with the data, I suppose. Any questions about results other than my math? 36,000. Okay. 36, Roughly 36,000 transactions per second. <laughs> All right, thank you, thank you. Uh, yes. Ah, uh, that is both. The short answer is both. So the, qu the question was whether, when we're talking about the system and the test, is whether it's a, a single system or a cluster or whatnot. So yeah, yeah, uh, it, is, it is whatever system it is that you're going to put together. So we need to talk a little bit about fair use because uh, we're going to to observe the well, copyright laws and, and whatnot. Um, unless you're going to publish an official result through the TPC, um, whatever result you're producing, you're not supposed to compare to any other TPC publications and or market against other competitors with, with uh, what other numbers that you're producing. But um, the, the point of this, as a reminder, is to help people do performance testing so we're not really out, out the, the um, we as in this, this content is not meant to go out there and help uh, uh, show off against the other folks that you're competing against. But um, what fair use does allow is for us to use the materials to do research and the type of research I think I'd like to believe that most of us are interested in is, is characterizing how well the systems, our system is performing, how well Postgres is performing, what, uh, whatever extensions and, and um, uh, other components that you're using with the database system. So a couple obvious things to do would be to test patches, um, to study the behavior of, of how well the system performs if you're tuning the operating system or, or the uh, tuning the database system. And the other part of um, what the other part that makes fair use okay is I, I had a actually a little bit of a hard time how to phrase this. It's, it's not that we necessarily have to ignore auditing the system. When um, saying auditing here really means paying for like a third party independent auditor to make sure you didn't cheat kind of thing. Um, but it 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 is I think it it is kind of nice to do some level. You may want to do some level of auditing to make sure that you are running the workload the way that you that you intended to. Um, when we're studying the system, I don't think we really need to care too much about pricing, how much it's costing, well, other than your own budget of putting the system together. Um, it's not important to have to use a commercially available, or not commercially available, but some system that is that is uh, current on the shelf that you can purchase or or even software that's necessarily coming with um, support. You may be testing things that are in development, not yet out yet kind of things. 
uh, my last comment here about um, rules that make the workload lo workload harder to run. There are, there are the specifications do say things like um, you have to run things in a particular way. I'll, I'll have some, I think, better examples later on. Any questions about fair use? Yes. Uh, so does that mean we can use it to test our own environment, like Postgres 9.5 to 9.6 to 9.7 to 10? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that, that that's fine. Back? Yeah, I, I, I think I think that exp I can kind of understand that specific example. Someone might argue that you're competing against previous versions, but it's I think that falls under uh, you're studying how things have changed over time. But yeah. So I'll start describing the, some of these benchmarks that I picked out a little bit. I categorized, grouped these up into two general categories. Um, the C and the E are two types of online transaction processing, OLTP benchmarks. So they're, they're primarily mixtures of read only and update transactions well and, and um, run at an intensive rate. And I'll talk a little bit about the H and the DS, two different types of decision support benchmarks that are um, running a bunch of reporting queries and do data maintenance, um, things like loading the database and, and updating the uh, data that's being queried. So in, uh, in my opinion, comparing these OLTP to, to the DSS benchmarks, I feel like the OLTP ones are harder to run but easier to look at, whereas I feel like the decision support ones are easy to run and harder to look at. All right, so the, the TPCC, how many folks have heard about this TPCC benchmark? Um, this benchmark is over 30 years old now. Is my math doing okay? 32 years old. So back in 1992, uh, this was this benchmark specification was released. It is modeling a wholesale supplier with with brick and mortar warehouses across the country that's maintaining 100,000 items per warehouse, where the activity the activity that's going on is that people are calling in on their phones to, um, to purchase parts, to ask where my part is, figure out what's going on, or um, um, calls between um, internal to the company trying to manage their stock between the warehouses. How many folks use the phone these days to call someone to order stuff anymore? Yeah, no one. Right? <clears throat> So uh, the, the system that this, that this is modeling is more or less a traditional three-tier client-server workload, uh, not workload, sorry, client-server um, uh, model. The database, I think, is self-explanatory for this crowd. Uh, so you got your database with all the data in it there. And then on the second tier, you have uh, what is called a client in, in TPCC terminology. That's, that's really um, what they're calling either a transaction manager that's doing connection pooling. And uh, you may or may not choose to run your application logic on the second tier versus in the database. And the terminal, the terminal is, is uh, what it sounds like to those of us who have been around back then with the old green screen terminals. It's, it's actually supposed to represent a physical little CRT of someone sitting there typing in stuff into the uh, uh, system. So pretty simple systems model. The, the specific rules in this benchmark that I think are interesting to note because when you're deciding whether that does it really matter if I run this thing the way that was intended to be run, or or do I make um, my life easier in making it simpler, or 
or knowing that there are certain aspects of how this benchmark is run doesn't really stress what you're doing. So why, why make things harder for yourself? So uh, um, the first part is relating to the scale factor, deciding how big the system that, how big the, uh, well, sorry, I think I have this a little out of order. You need to decide how big of the database that, that you want to run. The, um, the metric, the, the way that you're supposed to run this benchmark is that if you have some idea, and I might be a little bit of an iterative process here, if you have some idea of what the throughput you're expecting to get, you're supposed to run the, uh, you're supposed to build the database to be the size that's appropriate for the throughput that you're expecting to get. But um, you may, you may decide that the sizing and the, the correlation between the sizing and the throughput is, is not important to your testing needs. 100 warehouses is roughly uh, 10 megabytes of data. The scaling is pretty linear in this benchmark. If you want a terabyte of data, multiply the warehouses by roughly that amount or, or uh, less, depending on how you want to go. Um, the way that you drive this benchmark is also, since it's also tied such that you're emulating, you're supposed to emulate 10 users per warehouse that you're loading into this database. There are only five transactions in this benchmark that are run at different um, uh, percentages depending on how heavy you want the read-write versus read-only workloads, you, you could adjust the percentages that of the, the percentages of each transaction that you want to run to alter the workload to, to meet your needs. Um, oh, the, yeah, uh, sorry about the redundant primary metric, the, how, how you're looking at this thing as, as testers. If you're testing your, your database system, it, you really probably want to know what your total transactions per minute are or per second are as opposed to just counting this one new order primary metric. And uh, uh, another one that might be worth mentioning is, is that these Benchmarks do want you to be checkpointing your system on, in this case, every 30 minutes. Um, whether do you think that's necessary, whether you think you need to have a um, uh, more aggressive checkpoint timeout, for example, um, things that, that uh, uh, you can choose to meet your testing needs. Any question about the C before we go into some examples? So the, um, oh yes. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. What do you mean by 100 warehouses is roughly 10 MP of raw data? Oh, uh, sorry, one more time. Hello? Yeah, what do you mean by this 100, 100 warehouses is roughly 10 MP of raw data? Oh, oh okay. So um, the, the raw data is the raw text that gets generated before you load, and load, and load the database. But uh, um, if you're going to build uh, 100 warehouses to load, that's going to generate 10 megabytes of raw data. If you wanted to generate a terabyte, um, okay, I might need some math help. If you generate a thousand warehouses of data, data for a thousand warehouses, you're going to produce about a terabyte of data. Ten thousand warehouses will produce a terabyte of data. So this is uh, when we are doing benchmark. This this uh, we have to consider uh, the data data size. For that, you are telling this is ten MP. Is is it like that? Oh, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't quite understand. Is it like this uh, 10 MP when it, when it is comparing to, when we are doing this uh, benchmark, this uh, 10 MP of raw, raw, raw data we will use? Is it like that? Oh, um, I'm not sure what um, you mean by it, the, the size of the database being like um, 
being compared to? I mean, you, uh, we are loading this 10 MB of raw data into an uh, yes. DB, right, as right. part of benchmarking. Right. So, so it is like, is it like, uh, uh, and you are, you, are, you are telling like, if it is 1,000 warehouses, it is like uh, uh, 10 into uh, 10 GB of data. Is it, uh, is it? Uh, is I, it I, linear? Do you, are you asking if the, the scale is linear with how many warehouses you build, with how much data is? I can't get, could, I, couldn't, I couldn't get, could you please, Paran? Oh, so um, I, I think, I'm not sure if I'm understanding right, but I think you're asking if, so if you generate 100 warehouses, data for 100 warehouses, it's 10 megabytes of data. If you build, the, the scaling is linear, so if you were to build data for um, 1,000 warehouses, it would be 10 times more data. Is, okay. is that what you were trying to ask? No, I couldn't understand that. Oh. Um, what you have there may have mentioned, like 100 warehouses is roughly 10 MB of raw data. Is this, is, uh, is it mean like uh, 100 MB is divided by 100 is equal to uh, 10 KB of data? Oh, Sorry, I uh, uh, didn't get that. If 100 warehouses equals 10, um, I don't know, I think I need some help. Oh, okay, okay. We'll try to clarify afterwards. Um, all right. So this, this, uh, the test kits that were being produced out of the OSDL way back uh, a while ago, um, we called it database test two. And to, to run these tests are actually um, pretty simple when you have a test kit doing a lot of the uh, work for you. So for example, all these, all, all these kit implementations, you can basically run these things in two steps. You need something to generate and load the data. Well, some two general steps. You, you need something that will generate and load the data into the database. And once you have that data loaded, um, you can run tests. Uh, run um, the uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, you can run tests. So for to load the data, all you really need to do the only input that you the only decision that you need to make is is the scale factor, the size of the database that you want to build, and um, sometimes you may need to choose the format of the data depending on what uh, database system that you're loading because some of these test kits uh, do support more than one database management system. So when, when running these, these tests, uh, a lot of these kits are designed to try to um, either get you the best result that you can. So they may not collect statistics. Uh, you, some of them you will have to tell to collect database statistics, collect the operating statistics. The scale factor of the da database <coughs> needs to be reminded probably about how large the, the uh, database that you just built was and uh, how long of a test that you want to run. And in this case also uh, where you want to save your result. So the um, the execution of these things, I think, are can be pretty simple if the kits help you with a lot of this um, with the scripting to execute these things. But um, oh, backward. Um, but it's also worth noting uh, going over some of the data that that a lot of these test kits produce. Um, because when, when you're looking at the, the metric, the metric tells you how well the system performed, but it doesn't really tell you how well the system is actually behaving. So with the, um, with the TPCC, it's pretty straightforward, I think, or it, it fits on a screen pretty well. You have five transactions, uh, the delivery, new order, order status, payment, and stock level. Uh, the percentage 
is the um, the mix of the transactions showing you how how many of them had actually um, what percentage of all the transactions they actually are composed of these particular transactions. Um, the specification does tell you that these need to be fixed percentages, but if, if you are trying to alter the, the behavior of the workload to help stress the system that you wait, that in the way that you want, you may want something like the um, delivery workload, a uh, uh, more read-only workload to, to uh, execute more often. So th these are ways of verifying that. And um, in addition to that, these, many of these kits should also be telling you what the average response time is of the transactions or, or um, I think, I think uh, latency is another popular term to use for the transaction execution time. What the 90th percentile of uh, the response time is and, and then other basic metrics like uh, the actual total number of, of times a transaction ran. And another Another thing particular to the C is that this new order transaction is supposed to induce a rollback 1% of the time to um, uh, keep things interesting on the system. But what, so the, I, I, think, I think an important question is the metric that these, that these benchmarks are producing. Is it, is it really a good result or not? And the only way to, to really answer that is to look at how the, um, uh, to take a look at, at the system behavior and um, reviewing things like the response times for the, for the transactions. So um, here's an example of a terrible result for this particular kind of workload. The, these, TPC benchmarks are designed, uh, the OLTB ones are designed such that you should see some good regular behavior. So when you see a, a chart like this, which is charting the, um, the transaction rate over time for, th this one is just showing the new order transaction. But over the course of the two hours on the bottom, this transaction rate jumps up to almost a million transactions per minute, um, it's, it's fluctuating almost 10,000 transactions every couple minutes. At one point in the middle, for some mysterious reason, I, I say mysterious because this, is, this isn't something where I went in to kill the system just for kicks to generate a bad chart. This, this is an example of a poorly tuned database system such that the transaction rate is just all over the place. It never even recovers back up to, to one million transactions per minute towards the end. So if you, if you see something like this, sure you can average the number, and the average of that number comes out to um, that 700,000 transactions per minute on the previous slide. Um, seven, 700 transactions per minute, no, I think that seems like a fairly big number, but when, but when you look at the charts of the behavior of the system, it's, it's uh, terrible in my opinion. Okay, got to pick up the pace. All right, so um, a, an example of a good transaction rate for, for, the, for these TPC OLTP benchmarks is if it's well-tuned, if the system is behaving well, you're going to hit a um, hit your average rate and be pretty steady throughout the test. So here's another example where the, the ramp up was actually pretty quick here. So it jumps up to this 250,000 TPM uh, transactions per minute pretty quick. And over the course of the two hours, you hardly see any fluctuation, any dip in the throughput. Uh, similarly with, with the, if you're looking at your aggregated CPU utilization, you should see something very simpler. In, th in this case, what might not be so great is on this system, we're, only, we're not even using 20% of the available CPU resources. Uh, you see these little bumps every 30 minutes, which, which is um, related, an indication in this case, I, I uh, hope you take my word for it, is that uh, checkpointing is happening every 30 minutes like the benchmark specification says. So, so this is reflective of a, um, uh, of a test that's 
running the way that the specification defines it. And similarly with your I.O. throughput, the um, TPS here is, is uh, SARS terminology for IOPS. So you have a nice regular looking curve with the number of, of I.O. operations that are going through this test. You see little bumps again every 30 minutes for, for checkpoints that's, that are happening. So one definition of a good result is the, that, the, that the workload, the, the system behavior is producing smooth re or regular looking transaction rates, processor utilization. If you're, since these, these benchmark specifications are designed to simulate peak loads on the system, um, if, if you want to, if, if if you want to size your system so that you're, you're using it as, as full as possible, you want to see your processors mostly utilized and, and you want to size your storage to be able to support the transaction rates to, to um, use up your processing resources. So some of the, some of the rules, um, talking about some examples, some of the rules that you may consider breaking, if you will, um, whether where you put your Log, uh, application logic for the benchmark, uh, adjusting the transaction mix to see to to see a different um, mix of of read and write operations. Um, I think I glossed over the thinking and keying time earlier, where this this since this particular benchmark is simulating people. Well, if you don't want to simulate people these days, you can pretend that they don't have to think about what they're going to do next and and how much time it takes for them to to input data into the um, uh, into the system to look up um, orders and whatnot. Um, other things that some of these kits can do for you is do partitioning, whether it be horizontal or vertical, sharding across multiple systems or whatnot. Similarly, uh, you, some of these kits will let you partition how the database is driven. You, you could build out a full say you could build out a full database across 10 systems and decide to just drive one of them at a time. Okay, so uh, then the TPCE I think is worth mentioning because instead of 30 some years old, it's only uh, 12, wait, 16, 15. All right, maybe 15 years old. The specification is a little bit lighter on describing this benchmark in, in its brief description, calling, saying that the activities of the TPCE is representing a brokerage firm. I, because it's not my area, I don't know how much that means to other folks, but it's executing transactions relating to a brokerage firm's um, customer accounts. I, I do find the description of the system ar architecture a little bit better. Uh, you have your database. Um, you have a market market exchange emulator. Um, I know I'm not in the U.S., but those are the only market exchanges that I know, like the NASDAQ or the Dow Jones. The brokerage house is is uh, representing a um, firm, a company, if you will, that is running reports on on their um, customers' positions in the market, uh, doing research on different securities, stocks, uh, reviewing what's going on in the various markets, actually executing buy, sells, orders for securities, and, um, and so on. Updating trades that are in progress. The customers that are being emulated is supposed to be a little more modern. Um, they're emulating the activities of people at their workstations in the uh, brokerage firm or people out having a uh, coffee ordering stocks while they're um, uh, taking a break, uh, whether they're on a hike, at home on their laptop. So they're trying to be a little, they, they've modernized um, uh, a little bit. So in, in this case, the TPCE rules are actually um, in some ways more complicated, in some ways simpler than the TPCC. The database size is, is supposed to be determined by the number of customers that you're expecting to have um, uh, 
looking up securities, um, ordering trades and whatnot. There are 11 instead of five transactions, all, all again at, at predefined uh, transaction rates. Um, in similar to the C, the primary metric is the number of trade result transactions that actually get executed. This, the trade results transaction is, is what's um, uh, um, doing the buy-sell orders for securities. Instead of, unlike the C, instead of limiting to what the transaction rate is depending on, on, um, on how fast someone can, can key in information or think about what transaction they're doing next, uh, they actually ask uh, you as the test runner to uh, keep an eye on what the transaction rate you're actually producing and adjust your customer size based on um, taking your total customers and divided by 500. And again, similar to the C, they're, they're saying that when you run this benchmark, you, you need to do your checkpoints at regular intervals. So in, at the OSDL, this was actually the fifth benchmark kit we put together, so that's why we call it number five. And um, this has a one extra step compared to, to the TPCC. Uh, in this particular benchmark, the TPC does actually provide code um, that expect you to run to to generate the data and calculate your, um, not calculate, to, to also generate data that's being used and the transactions that are being executed. But otherwise, uh, same general idea. You load the database and, and can run as many tests as you need to run. Um, the, the data that's coming out of a TPCC that, that I think is important to review to to understand whether the benchmark, the workload is actually running well or not. It's similar to the C. I truncated a lot of stuff out because 11 transactions don't fit as well as five. You have your, what's shown here is that your throughput at, at the top, 14 trade results transactions per second. So they changed the units on this one. And then a little reminder of how big your database is supposed to be with, uh, in this case, 5,000 customers. So the, the, the data that these test kits that are supposed to be producing should allow you to review how fast, um, what the minimum transaction response time is, the latency is for, for each of these transactions, the average, the 90th percentile, the maximum, um, as well as the transaction counts, verifying that, that you're running as many of these as, as you intended to be, that you intended to be run. Um, how many rollbacks, warnings, or invalid transactions actually occurred during the test. So similar to the, to the TPCC, the, the considerations of whether the, the benchmark ran well or whether your system was able to, to run, this, run this benchmark well is, is the same. You want your transaction rates to be smooth, um, utilize probably want, if, if you're simulating uh, your peak loads, you want to see that your processes are mostly utilized and that, that your storage is able to keep up. Um, the showing charts is uh, uh, going to be, I felt going to be a little too repetitive, so I, I skipped those for the, for the E. Um, and because this is, this, I think that this particular benchmark is a little bit easier to run. The other things um, people do to uh, alter the workload is to uh, actually make it slower because these these customers that you're emulating are running as fast as they can. Some you might the reason for slowing it down is to to meet the um, limitations of of um, meeting your um, transaction rate to customer restrictions as defined by the spec if you chose to follow it. Um, one one bit of warning though is when you start um, when you start altering the transaction mix I think I phrased this a little funny up here is that the TPC code that is provided does validate the data coming back so different transaction mixes may produce some funny results uh, where you'll get warnings or invalid transactions coming up so uh, I think another another 
thing to consider is, well, these are both OLTP benchmarks. Do I really care which one I run? Do I need to run both? The, the C in most parts is overall less complex and easier to run than the E. So, um, but the, the E may have slightly more interesting transactions going on. And it's considered a more modern workload. Uh, a possible significant factor is that if, if you're running these benchmarks to spec, the E does need about, uh, I'm, I'm gonna be hand wavy here, half to a quarter of the amount of storage that, that you would need to run a C. So that, that could be a significant decision factor in, in um, uh, how much you can spend to, to run tests. I'm gonna have to pick up the pace for these last couple. Uh, the TPCH is a um, benchmark that was released in 1999. Um, it is intended to represent any industry that's managing, selling, distributing products worldwide. It has a list of, uh, uh, a series of 22 queries, ad hoc nature, they're providing answers to business questions such as uh, the effects of, of how items are priced, promotions that are run, um, looking at supply and demand, profit and, and revenue management, even a little bit of customer satisfaction uh, studies, studying the market share, shipping of the, of the products that, um, that have been moving around. So the, these these decision support benchmarks come have three basic parts. Uh, they're, when you're running this benchmark, you, part of the benchmark itself is loading the database. How long does it take to load data? Uh, how long does it take to build indexes, um, do any analysis, statistics building? Then it, that's uh, immediately followed by running what is called a performance test which is composed of a power test that is, that is testing how fast it can run individual queries uh, one at a time and also doing your data refresh as a separate step. Uh, the data refresh streams are uh, composed of, of expiring data, loading new data, um, refreshing statistics, and uh, um, any other data maintenance I may go through that. Then um, there's a throughput test that is running multiple simultaneous power tests that is going to stress the system and, and how much data it can go through. So, um, going really fast, uh, so the, this benchmark, you are supposed to run everything from the load to, to the throughput each time. The scale factor of these tests is, the, is representing the amount of data that you're loading into it. Um, the, the benchmark does only recognize, well, if you're gonna do an official publication, only recognize certain um, sizes anywhere from one gigabyte up to uh, 100 terabytes. The, another thing that's sort of funny, I'm gonna start skipping things here, so uh, uh, slides will be up later. The, the things that I think are worth mentioning that in this particular benchmark, because of the um, uh, various rules that I'm gonna have to gloss over, you're only allowed to build indexes on certain columns. Um, you can't rewrite any of the queries. And the um, primary metric here, the queries per hour, is based on, uh, funny enough, just the power test, the how well the um, uh, power test and the throughput test runs. So all, all, these, all these kits do have a, uh, um, do execute more or less in the same way. You have some, uh, this is another benchmark that you need to download code from the TPC and uh, uh, build that to generate the data and generate, to generate the queries to run. And um, the kits will all just run through all the load and power and throughput test and, and produce your uh, composite score of your queries per hour. Um, and I am out of time, but uh, uh, I'm gonna try to end really quickly and say that one of the things that people do also is to, that instead of running that huge amount of load, power, throughput test, that they'll um, 
uh, they are looking at specific queries. So some of these, some of these test kits do allow you to just load the data so you can have the data loaded, test individual queries to see how well your planner does in executing some of these complex plans. And before I get cut off here, I want to mention that the DS is more or less the same thing, except for it's doing everything with a star schema and uh, a snowflake schema, but otherwise a lot of the, there are a lot of similarities. Um, thank you, sorry for not going fast enough, and um, I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Okay, thanks Mark. Uh, we make it strict because we have to rebuild the room, so I would like to ask you to leave <laughs> so that the hotel uh, employees can just build everything for the large room and we will be back here in 10 minutes thanks <laughs> <laughs>